Um, so for those of you out there who might be thinking, you know what, I can stop that dog from pulling in one minute. Yeah, you're probably right, you can. Um, I could probably stop the dog from pulling a lot quicker too, um, but that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to change the mental state of the dog. Yes. Excellent work, young fella. Good job. Good. Good boy. Good. Let's go. Good job, champ. Good job. Good job. Good job. There you go. Good boy. Okay, so this is episode two of the Asher story. The story about a dog named Asher. In this what we're gonna start with is we're gonna start with showing you guys how we transition from starting where Asher is pulling on the leash, where he's not really paying attention, where he's um, doing the things that he wants to do while on the leash, to the end where he's able to pay attention, enough attention that I don't even have to hold the leash in my hand as I'm walking him. So that's that story, the story of Asher, part two. If you haven't seen video one, definitely go check that out. You're gonna see Asher, um, basically what I saw from him the first few days of training. Who is he to begin with? You're gonna see me playing tug of war with him. We're gonna talk about playing tug um, and make sure that we have control over that game. Um, and there's other things in there as well. Definitely something that I would check out, especially if you're watching part two. Doesn't make sense to watch part two without seeing part one. Um, yeah, so part one, part two. This will be here when you get back. We're doing all right. Okay, so this is day three with Asher here. Um, and I'm preparing to take him for a walk. The first day was really bad. He's a very strong dog. Um, and he wants to bring the same energy, that same running around energy that he does. He wants to bring that to the walk. So it was really tough for me to walk him the first day. Um, it has been better on the second day after I introduced him to the um, sidekick here. Um, he's been a little bit better. Um, today's the third day and I really wanna see a lot of improvement on his walking ability today. Um, what you're seeing me do now is a thing that I call still body, still mind, right? And the idea is that he can sit or lay down next to me, but what he has to do is he has to be calm, right? Before we start to walk. Um, with him, I try to do this, I'm not gonna do it 10 minutes today, but just about every walk, I try to have him just sit next to me for approximately 10 minutes, right? And you can see this is kind of hard, he's whining about it, he wants to get up, he wants to sit where he wants to sit, and I just fuss with him and, and make sure that he stays right next to me at the best of my ability um, and just stay there, just chill, right? Just be here. Um, and without running, jumping, sniffing, all that kind of stuff. This gets them ready to go for our walk. Um, after I do this for about 10 minutes, I like to do the next thing, I, which is the yes game. So I just go, yes. I get my treat and I give it to them. I hear a lot of dog trainers complain, yes, about using food and it makes the energy of the dog get higher. Um, I don't care, <laughs> yes if it does. Um, I don't see that that much. Sometimes I do, but um, it's, not a, it's not a big deal to me. Um, what I'm doing with this yes game, yes, is I am, I am rewarding. I'm just really establishing that yes means I'm gonna give you food, yes. But as I start to give him nice things, you'll see that he starts to pay more and more attention to me. Yes. And then I could do things like wait till he looks, for, looks at me and then give him food. All right, so it's really easy to stop even a dog like Asher from pulling on the leash. You could just stop the behavior from happening. What I'm trying to do here is actually a lot harder. What I'm trying to do is I'm changing the way that he perceives the world. And when I change the way that he sees the world or thinks of the world, then a symptom of that change is gonna be him not pulling on the leash, him paying more attention, right? So um, I can correct 
especially firmly, especially with um, leash, like you can correct a dog like Asher and it's not gonna hurt him emotionally or spiritually or mentally or in any way. He's just gonna pay more attention. But it's almost like as if he's paying more attention out of the mindset of I would like to um, avoid being corrected, right? Which is a little bit different than I'm paying attention just because I want to pay attention. Maybe I'm showing I'm paying attention because I want to move forward, right? Um, which, is, which is a little bit different. So this takes more time. It takes no time to make a dog go, maybe I should think about this before I do it. But it takes more time to, um, to teach a dog like that mental state to be in. You know, when you relax, then you move forward. You know, that's harder because you need the dog to actually relax in order to have that happen. Um, so for those of you out there who might be thinking, you know what, I can stop that dog from pulling in one minute. Yeah, you're probably right, you can. Um, I could probably stop the dog from pulling a lot quicker too, um, but that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to change the mental state of the dog. So it's the difference between, I guess, making a cheap product that looks correct and actually making the true product, I think. Let me know what you think in the comments. Yes. And then I could start giving food for that. Um, before I get on the sidewalk, I like to start walking. Yes, game here. Yes. And you can see he's like walking wherever he wants. This is still just the third day. I don't want to yield to him though. Um, so if he gets in front of me, I'm just going to walk through him, right? Because I, I don't want to have a habit of me trying to avoid him. So here, I just keep walking through. And if I bump him, I bump him, you know? Um, he want, I want him to start to make the habit of yielding to me instead of me yielding to him. Good. I'm waiting for a good time to say yes. And then I want to put the food where I want him to be. Yes. I put the food where I want him to be. Good boy. Good. Yes. Tap him on the shoulder. Here's the food where I want him to be. Excellent. Now we're ready to start walking. So we're gonna walk a little bit here. Um, I, I actually, there's one more thing I should do before we start walking, um, and that's the one-step game. I just started teaching him the one-step game, so he's not very good, no. He's not very good at it yet. But the one-step game builds focus. No. Good. Yes, I'll take that. No. Good. Nope. Good. So we're seeing he's starting to learn it, yes for a couple of reasons. One is that he's not hitting the end of the leash the way he was yesterday. The other reason I know he's starting to know, because when I say no, um, he's starting to jump back. No. See, he kind of fixes himself. Good. <laughs> Goofy dog. I love Dobermans. They're my favorite. All right, let's go for a walk. You see a change in his behavior here. Once again, this is his classroom, so he focuses better. Whoa, where's that camera? <laughs> there it is. Once again, nope, it's gone. Whoa, where's that, ca where's that camera going? <laughs> here, does this help? <laughs> uh, there, there it is. All right, so um, once again, that's his classroom. So his focus is gonna be better on me there than it is on the walk. But we're gonna start walking now. So you can see here on the walk, he wants to pull out in front. Um, I don't love this for a dog. It's not that bad compared to his first day. Um, but there, it's still not good, right? You see he's out in front. I'm gonna go ahead and start this. No. Good. 
No. This is what our walks are gonna be like probably till Friday. Good. Yes. Now, if you wanna know what the superpower for dog trainer is, it's the ability not to get bored. Hey, doing that. Oh, good stuff, he rejected the treat. So what that means is that he doesn't get treats for doing the one step anymore. Now he gets affection. Good. No. Good. Yes, good boy. I need to give two hand petting here because I need to reward him. This is gonna be transitory. He's gonna be taking food again in a second. He's just kind of pouting and kind of like, hey, if I don't take food, do I have to, can we stop doing this? No, we can't. No. Good. No. Is it inside? There's, there's two off leash dog. Let's go. <laughs> We're going. Let's go. Let's go that way. <laughs> yeah. We're not doing that. <laughs> two off leash fitties. We're out of there. <laughs> you got it? You're recording? All right. So my neighbor down the street, I guess there's I don't know. I know the lady. She doesn't have off-leash dogs, but she has two off-leash dogs right now. They're over there. We're splitting. That's what we're doing. They're right by that black car. <laughs> so, so we're splitting. We're getting out of there because, first of all, he's a highly reactive dog. Highly reactive. I don't know those dogs. He's not aggressive. I don't think of him that he's going to try to um, do anything. But the dog, there he is right there at the fence. Are you able to catch him? <laughs> They're yelling and screaming and stuff, but we're not staying around there to be involved in that. We get out of there. <laughs> um, that's what we got to do. Uh, so I'm still watching because he could come any moment up here. And that's a pretty good size pity. Um, I don't know the dog. Maybe the dog is fine, um, but we're not gonna find out. Good boy. This is what it's like, by the way, just walking with them. You can see I have a standard uh, leash grip here and you can see this is tense. It shouldn't be. I don't want that to be tense. All right, up the stairs we go. Oink. <laughs> Completely forgot about me. There he is again. Oh, let's go. Good. This is, of course, the very beginning. You know, the first three days, we're really implementing a lot. I'm teaching him a lot about the structure, you know, how things work. When is he gonna feel tension? When is he gonna feel the tension on the leash go away? You know, practical things like um, the one-step game and things like that. And now, from day three to day seven, of course, every day, um, I am doing training sessions with Asher. Day seven, our recording of day seven here, I kind of shift my focus for my clients and for you watching. And really what we're, what we're going to start to show is some of the things that support what we're doing with our communication. We're going to start talking about routine. We're going to ta start talking about um, structure you know, routine, how we do our training session, the order that we put things in, how we schedule his day. We're gonna be talking about energy management. Getting him in the right mental space. A lot of the things that we're doing in day seven, we're gonna feel the effects of in day 10, day 11, right? We're just getting him used to these things um, at this early stage. So the techniques that you see in this video to transform Asher or to do our best to change Asher's way of walking. They're really easy to implement. The technique is really easy to do, but there's some trickiness to it. And we'll be talking about that as we go on through this video as well. Yeah, here we go. We're moving on to day seven, check it out. So this is just him being just nervous about Frank. Frank, can you step backwards a bit? We're gonna come through.
So now we're about to go outside. And um, before we go outside, I have them usually, I always have them sit and chill out right next to the door. He's making a little more distance than he normally does. You see his paws raised. That's a little bit of anxiety. Um, and I'm gonna wait here for him to calm himself a bit. Okay, we could go out. Right, I'll give him a couple extra seconds. As long as my arm is out and my body language is like this, it means that he's allowed to sniff. You know, he's allowed to, to go where he needs to go. As soon as this body language changes, then it will be, um, then it'll be, we'll be on to something else. There, all right. Now I'm gonna bring him to my side. Now my body language has changed. My arms are inside at my side. And now, now that he's sitting, I wanna see him calm himself down and look to me to move forward. The thing about this dog um, is that, and I learned this as I go on, as I went on with training with him, is that his biggest problem is his ability to self-regulate his energy. He doesn't know how to calm himself down aside from being in the crate. In the crate, he will be calm, but in every other situation, he will not. Um, and, and that's what we're, we're going about teaching him using a variety of techniques and methods. One of the methods I'm using is just sitting here and waiting. You know, you can see there's no tension on the leash. You can see his paws up. And the other thing you can see is that he's never looking at me, right? He's avoiding, basically he's avoiding giving me attention right now. This whining that you're hearing is him kind of fussing because he's not able, you know, just to move ahead, just to move forward. So I'm gonna wait here for a minute, wait for the fussing to stop, wait for, um, wait for him to give me attention and then we're gonna move forward. We want him to understand what we want. If a dog can't sit calmly next to you, then they can't walk calmly with you. Now you might notice I'm not asking for his attention. I'm just waiting for him to, to give it. Um, of course, we just have to chill and kind of be quiet here and just wait for it to happen. Okay, so this is what I mean by um, the technique is simple, but it is still hard to do. Um, what I mean by that is what I'm asking Asher to do Technically, all I have to do is lift my elbow here. I make tension up, he's gonna sit where he is pretty much and then I release it. Very easy to do, right? What I'm asking him to do is just sit and just look at me and pay, pay some attention to me. Give me some attention. Easy to do, right? Technically, anybody can make that tension upwards. When the dog sits, anybody could drop their arm. The hard part is being patient with the time it takes. Now I could tell you, this may be 40 seconds from when I wanna get him to sit still and to, um, and to look up at me to the time when he actually does that. But in that time, it feels to me like it's a lot longer. It's just like he's not doing it, <laughs> right? Um, so there's a lot inside of me that I have to deal with there where it's just stick with it. If it takes long, I know there's other things you have to do today, Martin in the red sweatshirt, but if it takes long, it just takes longer. We have to just stay there and we just have to be patient and just wait for it to happen. That ability to do that is really hard, especially when there's a camera on you, especially when there's a client watching you, especially when, the, when you're seeing your neighbor on the street, especially when you wanna just walk your dog, you know, when you have your own goals and your own desires to be able to stop and be like, nah, what, you, what we need to do is all I need to do is lift my arm, watch your butt go down, drop the leash, and let you just chill right there and you're gonna have to give me the sign that you're not 
looking around. You're gonna have to bring your attention to me. I'm not gonna ask you for it. I'm not gonna tell you to watch me. You're gonna have to just do it. That is hard. The technical skill of exercise like this is really low, but the value and the importance of it is really high, right? As dog trainers, we should always be pushing ourselves to do that thing that is necessary for our dog even when it's hard for us. We're asking them to change for us and to do things for us, then we need to be able to do things for them. And if it's hard for us to stand still and wait for them to pay attention to us, we need to show them that we can do hard things too. Just like how it's hard for you to not sniff the ground when we're walking. That's a hard thing for a dog, that's your primary sense. Um, it's hard for me to stand still and just wait for you to do what you're supposed to do. I get impatient, that's hard for me. We both have to do hard things, that's sharing. Right, so I hope that helps. This is a lot about the inner game of dog training, right? The, how we prepare ourselves for the task at hand. This is an outward example of what inner training looks like. I hope this is helpful to you guys. Okay, let's go. One of the cool things about dog training is that when you're in that moment and you're, and you're standing there and the dog is sitting but they're not paying attention to you, that moment is gonna come to an end. There's gonna be a time when either one out of two things is gonna happen. Either one, you get impatient and you don't wait for the dog to look at you and you move on. That's gonna happen. Or the other thing's gonna happen is the dog is gonna look at you. Um, now, when you're standing there, you don't know how long it's gonna take for the dog to look at you. It would be really a lot easier if um, we knew that it was gonna take 40 seconds before the dog looks at us, right? But that idea of it could take however long, we don't know, is one of the things that make it challenging for us to be able to deal with a situation like that. The good news is that when things are challenges, what do we need to do? We need to practice. And um, a dog like Asher is gonna give us many opportunities to practice standing and being patient without knowing how long we're gonna have to be patient for. We're gonna get good at it, <laughs> right? Um, so here's another opportunity, check it out. I'm waiting for him to kind of look up at me and to be more relaxed. I'm waiting for the wrinkles in between his ears to settle as he looks up at me. That's what I'm waiting for. And we can proceed forward as soon as we see that and not before. Um, the whining also has to stop before we'll proceed forward. This kind of activity with a dog that's active like he is um, will also help him to burn energy because this is really hard work that I'm asking him to do. Although it doesn't look like I'm doing much, it's really hard work. <laughs> yep, that's just him, emotions um, and the hormones moving through. That's what's causing all this. This will settle on its own. Um, I don't have to correct it. As a matter of fact, correcting it sometimes can add energy to it. Okay, let's go. The whining stopped, the wrinkles in between his ears went away, he looked at me patiently, and that means we could go forward. Good. Other things that we're working on to calm him down is, um, is I'm working him through uh, what TBTE, Mark McCabe and Stephanie McCabe, would call the relaxation triad as well as this leash work to keep him calm, right? 
You see how his head is moving back and forth. This is a lot better than it was, but I still want him to be more still. Good. Wait for him here. That looked pretty good. We're gonna move forward, good. Let's go. Tension here, release tension, good. The part of the leash that's most important is this part here. If you guys see tension on that part of the leash, oh, there we go, that causes this every time. If you guys see when the tension is on this part of the leash, that is when he is either moving too fast or doing something, his energy is off. If, his, if, he's, if he's calm, then there will be no tension here. That's fussing, right? He's fussing with the collar. We also hear fussing, verb, audible fussing. Uh, this looks pretty okay, but his paw's up. So we're gonna wait here a little bit. And then we're gonna head back inside. Um, I'm gonna let him settle down inside a little bit, and then I'm gonna take him out for another cycle directly after. Okay, so um, what you see there is over and over again, I'm consistently trying to just slow myself down. As soon as I feel him like speeding past me, I have to stop. A habit is something a dog does without thinking about it. He switches behaviors without any thought being in it. My job is to slow him down. That's hard for me, right? It's hard for me to have that patience without going overdoing it and getting him back to like, all right, I'm gonna pay attention. As we go through this, you're seeing us transition. What we're about to look at is him inside. As we do this, it's really hard on him too, right? So he is getting more and more tired every time that he slows himself down, every time that he has to stop. He looks around and then to, in order to go forward, he has to look at me. He's tiring himself out. This is a lot of mental exercise. Um, so what I'm gonna do is we're gonna transition inside and I'm gonna give him a break from that. Then we're gonna transition back outside and then back inside. We're gonna cycle between inside, do this, outside, do that, inside, do this. Um, we're, we're gonna basically cycle back and forth between them um, to help him build the correct muscles, mental, energy, the mental muscles, to be able to do what he needs to do. Okay, now, oh, a little excited here. Ask him to SIT, calm himself down, good. Now we're gonna ask him to go over here, and we're gonna do a little just a calming down on this mat. Um, for this part of the exercise, you can see how to struggle, right? For this part of the exercise, I'm gonna reach down slowly and calmly, grab my stopper, move that, and then I'm gonna just slide the, the um, transitional part of the sidekick, the head halter part off the nose, put my stopper back down, and I didn't get a good massage on his nose as I was taking that off, so I'm gonna give it to him now. In a perfect world, I get the massage as I'm taking it off and I'm just waiting for him to relax. So that is one cycle pretty much. Um, and you can see here he's struggling into it, but he's getting there. That's one cycle pretty much. He's gonna stay on this mat for um, probably around 10 or so minutes. And then I'll give him a rub down, a massage. Then I'll put his head halter back on and then we'll go outside and we'll do the same loop again. Bring him back in here. Um, I'll let him be on the mat, calm himself down give him a little bit of massage, and then I'll bring him back and put him in his crate, right? Um, because the main focus for him, all of his unwanted behaviors come out of his energy. So our main focus is starting to teach him how to take some of that edge off the energy, right? So this is the very beginning of me teaching him the right mental state to access in order to be successful on a walk, right? We're dealing with his habits. It's not easy yet for him to be able to sit, chill, and just look up and pay attention, right? We're seeing him grow. We're seeing that start to take place. Um, at the same time as he's being demanding with me, but the good news is that we have another video in this series. 
where it's not just about being in the house in the yard basically, but we're starting to go out into the world. You know, we're starting to take it on the sidewalk with the goal of being able to move him around and bring him other places while maintaining um, that attention. In other words, we're starting to increase his grade school level. He's graduating, he's getting better. So check out the next video. You'll see him much improved, Asher. If you like what you see here, I know this is in depth and it, you know, a lot of times people just wanna see, you know, show me the dog biting, show me the dog not biting. Show me the exact technique that you use, and I'm doing that. I'm doing the, the exact techniques that I'm using. But if you like what you see here, if you think that this is a little different than a lot of dog, other dog training channels, give us a thumbs up. Hit, actually hit the button, subscribe, hit the bell button. You know, tell your friends about us. Let us know that you like what we're doing. We'd like to see our numbers grow. We'd like to see it raise. So, uh, so raise us up, you know, boost and all that. For those of you who are watching these whole videos, you're learning a lot. Till next time, enjoy your day, enjoy your dog.